Behind the Counter is sponsored by Hover.com. Domain names made simple. Go to gfq.hover.com and get 10% off your entire purchase. And by Stitcher Radio. Listen on the go via the Stitcher mobile app. For more information, go to stitcher.com slash gfq. Hello and welcome to another edition of Behind the Counter, uh, brought to you live today from Blog World at the Jacob Javits Center. And, uh, you know, this is the first time we are uh, doing a broadcast from the city that never sleeps. And with me, as always, is the man who never sleeps, Jonathan Adler. Hey, folks. What's up? Good morning. So uh, we're here at Blog World. We're going to be talking about comics. and uh, As blo- usual. And blogging about worlds. Uh, it's a, if you're tuning in right now, it's a little bit of a weird dynamic because we're never side by side. We're always facing each other. And which is also for the better because we really do not like looking at each other. It's true. It's true. So it's, it's, a much, it's a much nicer setup. We're both hideous. We're also staring at a fleet of humanity. That's uh-huh. blog world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's millions of people in front of us. Just and like the, the amount of humanity like that's in here sucking up my auction is just <laughs> incredible. The guy that looks like River Rubin running around. What an incredible, incredible turnout. What an inning. Uh, so, um, hey, you're going to get your comic news a day early today, which means that we will not be uh, on air tomorrow night. We will rejoin you next week, though. Petition for us to take over our Thursday spot. We are really trying hard to take over uh-huh. on Thursdays. And we also have the uh, the beautiful and wonderful Suncast. Um, in present. In present today, manning the box. Uh, thank the, you. The man in charge. And also, uh, thank you, Andrew, for uh, letting us do the show today at Blog World. Um, it's an honor. I don't know why I took my glasses off. I can't see anything anymore. I know. And uh, you know, Kunal Aurora. Kunal's walking just, by, uh, jerking himself off. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Kunal Aurora, the, uh, the comedian. The comedian. Um, so let's talk about comics, bro. Is that what we have to do? Yeah. What do we, we jump what, right into it? What do we have this week? Uh, well, we had no real news. Mm-hmm. Uh, we really didn't have uh, much in terms of uh, organization because that's not what we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we had some good comics. We some really. It's a big week for uh, a couple of releases um, and some really cool stuff. Those are my classes. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. It was a fantastic week of books, man. Like it was. It was like yesterday, oh, and I was like, man, a lot of books came out this week. You were like, nah, bro. And like we both had giant stack of roos. Well, the last time I went to, the last time I went to go buy books was I spent seventy bucks. I think I could have got a discount. It was like thirty five dollars. So like, oh, not that many books. It's a lot of books, man. Uh, well, this week we actually well, might as well talk about this number one. Um, yeah. We uh, when um, uh, DC announced that they were doing the, uh, the basically the prequels to the uh, to the Watchmen. Uh, franchise with uh, a bunch of new creators and a bunch of new artist teams. Um, this week, the first salvo has been fired from the DC Battleship, which is um, <laughs> before Watchmen, Minutemen, uh, number one by Darwin Cook. Uh, Darwin Cook handled the writing and the art chores on this um, on this comic. And my personal thoughts on it is that it was like the fan fiction that won. I dug it, but. Uh, there's still like a little bit of that fanboy spark in me. I don't that, know. I that, mean, you know, I don't think I, I, the fan fiction thing. I think is a, a bit of a put down. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's not a put it down. Is, yeah, it's it is. Put there's down. so much fan fiction, dude. Yeah. We could we could produce fan fiction in the next ten minutes. But I'm saying I'm saying that they won. Like this this won the contest. Well, this is. You know? I mean, it's a great way to start off to the wor- to this mm-hmm. world. Uh, it's an awesome way to you know reintroduce the Washington world. Right. Uh, Darren Cook is like definitely channeling the. Uh, Dave Gibbons aspect of like the repetition of images, yeah. clocks, yeah. circles. They have an ode. It is kind of like a little ode to the beginning of Watchmen with the alleyway scene and everything. Um, there's a lot going on in the issue just in terms of reintroducing the characters. You know, this is uh, basically the writing of uh, Underneath Under the Hood, which is mm-hmm. Night Owl's book. Right. So you get a good, good introduction of these characters who you really didn't get to spend a lot of time yeah. with. You know, aside from the main characters, maybe you want to be quiet. <laughs> it's very loud. Can Blog World, shut up, please. I don't know if uh, if anybody's picking up on the ambient noise here. I, you know what? Suncat. Uh, ah, screw it. Uh, <laughs> Not even anyway, make it stop, somebody. Even, even left to his own devices. Um, Right, people are coming around. They're kind of like looking at us, like, uh, like we're. What we're are these guys doing? Cage Zoo animals. These guys got comics. Uh, we're trying to do some trivia today too. Like we have a bunch of prizes to give away. Jonathan was so kind enough to go into the vault, the vault. and uh, he picked up. Uh, you know, we got a couple of um, three hundred figures to give away. A couple of awesome T-shirts and a very exclusive patch 
uh, Diamond Select bust. Or not. Uh, from Wolverine. <laughs> Uh, if we don't get enough trivia, it ain't going away. Listen, we don't want to carry this stuff home, so if anybody wants to do trivia right now, if anybody's here right now, if anybody... Or, can, or if you want to take a top off. Or if anybody... No. If anybody can make it... Uh, <laughs> yes. If anybody can make it here... Uh, In the next 10 minutes, take a top yeah. off, you'll get a patch bust. Or if you know how to answer questions at all. We don't even give you comic book questions. It would be... Uh, what's, what's it like outside? Yeah. Yeah, we just want interaction. We just want to interact with some new people because we see the same people. It's bitter. Over and over again. Uh, another question would be, what is uh, Kunal's job? And if you said comedian, you would get a prize. That's a plug for you, Kunal. You welcome. Did you not wake up yet? Are you like still like asleep? Are you still asleep? Yeah, I'm still hungover. Oh, all right. What a puss. So um, Adam's here from uh, Lunatic Radio. Yes, there's so a bunch of stuff that people can't see. So by the way, so is Kieran. So, all right, uh, back to uh, back to Watchmen. Um, the art was beautiful, of yep. course. It was like a nice interesting, and also um, what has kind of been catching me off guard lately with a lot of comics, both Marvel and DC, is the fact that the parental advisory notification on the front is so tiny at this Very point. Very good point. It it's, is it's a it, mature book. It's it's a mature book because like there's a lot there's like a couple of racial slurs. Um, I have to read this. Well, the the black uh, the black pearl. Yeah. The red pearl, whatever it is. Not the black pearl. Uh, so, you know, you have um, you have like this mature reader stuff, and like also in the new in the newer Wolverine series that's written by uh, Cullen Bunn. Uh, I'm just reading it. And I'm like, man, this is like this is like really ultra violent kind of stuff. And then I, there's like a tiny little thing on the front that says parental advisor. Well, it's tough with it's tough with Wolverine too because Wolverine has has, has become such a marquee character now. Yeah. And you really want to stay away from the fact that it's too violent. Mm-hmm. But you know that's what we have like the Wolverine the best there is miniseries for. Yeah. Uh, but you know at the end of the day it's a dude with blades coming out of his hands so you have to have yeah. some type of violence. Well, you want that you want that bloody kind of Wolverine and it's cool because like in that run actually if we could talk about it for like about a second, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. you know the fact that like the, what what made me check the cover is that like there's one scene where like you always see Wolverine get his face blown off but it's always done in like a silhouette. Yeah. Um, in the last issue, like he gets his face blown off, but it's like really blown off, you know, like it's blown off to the bone. He's got one eye growing back, and like a little. I feel like a nine-year-old kid shouldn't really be reading that, but at the same time, I was also that nine-year-old kid reading, like really weird comic books. Yeah. What was um, the point you wanted to make about this? The the point I wanted to make about this was uh, a big point. I mean, w- with the Watchmen stuff, um, what's really cool about it is is the fact that you get to see more of a focus on these dudes that mm. you never saw before. Uh, I mean, Hooded Justice was alluded to in the Watchmen story, and this you get to see him kind of in action and how terrifying a guy with a hangman's noose and a black mask comes at you. And and also like, the fact that he's a German strongman isn't doesn't help. Plus, that. through Watchmen, like he's also like uh, like a masochist. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and he's gay. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, he yeah. was. Uh, he was uh, stuffing, um, I think, dollar bill or something like that. Really. Yeah, there's like in the, the okay. supplementary information, the uh, like in under the hood stuff. There I, was uh, I must have missed it. There was uh, sodomy going on. Yeah. Uh, all right, so and what's your name? Uh, Silk Silhouette. Is that her name? Silk Spectre. Silk, not Silk Spectre. The other one, Silhouette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silhouette She's a lesbian. is a uh, is a lesbian. Yeah, a lesbian. <laughs> John's using John Johnson's using the microphone that I use every week, so it's like you really have to like kind of suck on it. You yeah, guys <laughs> suck on it. <laughs> to start talking. Is that better? <laughs> That sound better. <laughs> good. Good. Nobody, nobody's paying attention to us. We we have free reign right now. Uh, all right, next. Bit. I have no pants on. Let's talking about no pants underneath this. Day. All right, Avengers versus X Men, number three, uh, number five. Avengers versus X Men. Which you also have him getting his face blown off. Wolverine. Yes, I, he always gets his face blown off. Um, also, you know what? Pick up, uh, pick up Watchmen. Pick up uh, Minutemen number one. It's not bad. Uh, I thought it was great. I really enjoyed the hell out of it. It's cool. You know what? Like, I'm not like. I think uh, I think you're secretly hating it because you're supposed to hate it. Yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot of kind of like subconscious melodrama going on with this book in, yeah. inside of me. I have a lot of inner turmoil with this comic book. It's weird because I shouldn't. It's a comic yeah. book. But um, right, moving on, man. Avengers vs. X Men number five. Huge, huge issue in this Big. Um, in this miniseries. Uh, as we all know, the. Phoenix Force is on its way to Earth, and the heroes have tried countless times to stop it, and they haven't really been able to stop it. So it's and you know uh, last issue they end up on the on the moon, uh, where the where you know the other Phoenix saga kind of culminated, and um, you know the heroes are still fighting each other, and the Phoenix Force is literally right there. It's about like ten blocks away. Um, take it away. 
I didn't read the comic book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need a point of reference. Uh, so it's not in the stack. Is it not no. in the stack? Really? It's not in the stack. Oh, what happened to the stack? Uh, I think you put it away. So, um, the last issue kind of also leaves off with the fact that both Avengers and X-Men are on the moon, and Hope uh, also reaches the moon. Hope is trying to absorb the Phoenix Force. She is trying to be one with the Phoenix. Uh, for what, she doesn't know, but um, Cyclops to is me. trying to... I didn't lie to you. Cyclops is trying to... Uh, save her from the Avengers who want to take her away to jail. Wolverine is, you know, he's supposed to kill her. But that's like a weird thing also because in, uh, I forgot what time it was where she was like, uh, he was narrating, it was like a whole Wolverine, Wolverine narrative. It was the Wolverine versus X, uh, Wolverine X-Men uh, issue. Okay, all right. Well, it looks like we uh, we sent out our uh, our faithful newsboy, uh, Rich Butler, who uh, runs uh, My Take Radio. Uh, he's going to gather us some, uh, we're back at Blog World. He's going to grab us some um, some trivia contestants. we doing trivia. we got a lot going on here. Um, we were talking about Avengers versus X-Men right before our mics cut off and, you know, the man tried to stifle us. And by the man, I mean Suncast. Ugh. He hates us. Uh, hates, our, <laughs> hates our guts. Um, so, all right, Avengers vs. X-Men. What, what did you like about the book? What didn't you like about the book? Well, what I liked about the book is... Uh, I, this, I'll, actually, I'll say what I didn't like about the book. It really felt like the fastest issue that I've read so far. Okay. Usually, these, these issues have been very meaty. Um, right. This is one of the few that really... I guess because there's so much action in it. Mm-hmm. Um, it really kind of just moved forward real quick. Um uh, Plus, I mean, with this type of story, you're getting a lot of repetition of the same battles. You know, you've seen Hulk Juggernaut, like, a bunch of times now. The thing I liked about this, though, is the fact that, like, when you have the repetition of the same battles that have been going on since issue one, they're so tired at this point. Yeah. Where, like, Namor is trying to say in Pierce Rex. Oh, they're The thing exhausted. is, like, just shut up. Apparently, Professor X is in Ibiza. Going on vacation. Fighting his son Legion on a beach. Uh, <laughs> Scarlet Witch is <laughs> flipping out. Um, but, like, just like, you mm. know, in the past, the Dark King saga. Uh, everything's going down in the moon. Mm-hmm. Um, Iron Man has created like a Phoenix Buster armor, which is freaking pretty awesome. Yeah. It looks ridiculous. It looks like a Transformer. It looks so awesome. It basically transforms into a gun. Yeah. And, um, I mean, great John Romita Jr. art. Who wrote this one? Fraction wrote it. Yeah. Um, this is closing out the first act of the, uh, of the saga. Mm. So we're moving into part two. Right. Um, because basically what happens, spoiler guys, is that Iron Man blows up the Phoenix. They think they kind of won. Then they realize not Hope has not become the Phoenix, but it's split into the bodies of Cyclops, Colossus, Magic, Emma Frost, and Namor, if we get a shot of that. Which which I didn't see coming. My call was not at that all. it was going to go right into Cyclops. Yeah. Um, but the fact that it infected, like, because of Tony Stark's insane uh, Japo tech weaponry, it infected uh, the, the quote unquote, like, like you were saying before, like, the bad these, guys. The eviler X Men team, apart from Cyclops, because you have yeah. Juggalosis. I love his, I love his, his Phoenix Cox. Yeah. All, all former villains. Yeah. Um, or like reform villains, except for Cy- well, technically Cyclops, yes, because was he villain. was he was a villain at one point, but he was brainwashed when he was Apocalypse. Um, so. You have like them getting away, and the Phoenix is kind of like it's like almost like a phalanx where it's talking through each of them, and Captain America is like, "Scary voices and threats don't don't frighten us." Like, what do you got? And they're like, "You don't understand." Like, we're out of here, dudes. And like Cyclops blast them all away, and they take Hope to an unknown unknown location. I'm assuming to heal her to get her ready for the Phoenix Force. And what I think is going to happen is I I read because Scarlet Witch mm-hmm. has been the background for all of this, so they're teasing the next. Part as no more Avengers, right? Uh, so she's going to be coming into this in some way, shape, or form. I really think that she is the one that's going to be the uh, the Phoenix Force. Your money's on uh, your money's on Scarlet Witch. I'm Scarlet Witch. I think they're wrong. At this point in the game, I'm trying out my my uh, <laughs> augmented reality for this panel. Why try augmented reality? You are in the reality of beautiful blog world. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Cool New that York is. City. I can't. I can't see. <laughs> um, also, every Marvel versus every. Mar- Avengers vs. X-Men has augmented reality on every mm-hmm. single one of their issues. So download the app if you're buying this yeah. stuff. It's very cool stuff. You have to make sure to download the app because otherwise, if John didn't say that, he just would have sounded crazy. Yeah. 
Very cool. They tell you how to do it in the in the comic, so it's not brain surgery. Um, also, I feel like the Scarlet Witch's role in uh, in the entire Avengers X Men saga, she's Jesse Spano from that that famous episode of, of Saved by the Bell, where she keeps taking the speed to stay up. Yes. And she's just like, <laughs> what was it? What was the? Uh, I'm so scared. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so scared. Because every time they show her, she's like breaking down in front of like an old TV set, which I'm assuming is on Wondergore Mountain. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's like, like I, I really, they have really shitty apartments on Wondergore Mountain. I can't do that anymore. Like animal people and low mm. low income housing. And a good uh, a good little tie in for this issue was the uh, the newest issue of Uncanny X Men. Uh, Always issue. rocks. The Uncanny X Men uh, tie ins have been really pivotal yeah. and really awesome. Um, because uh, in in the uh, in the Uncanny X Men book, it's the uh, it's the kind of like the B team of the X Men, where you have uh, Magneto and Psylocke and um, Doctor Nemesis. Yeah, Doctor Nemesis, and um, I forgot who else. But they're kind of in a bunker, Storm. and the kids are in there, and Storm's in there, and you know, it's like their whole like they're waiting out the storm, basically. You know, they don't know what's happening above ground, and they also have um, Unit, who's uh, trapped Amazing in the. Who's trapped in Utopia? Who's kind of like uh, and like? It's a nice little segue because you, you touch on the Phoenix stuff. You don't really know what's going on, but you have Unit also kind of controlling. Um, I keep wanting to say Jocasta because she reminds me of Jocasta. Danger. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you know he's controlling well, Danger and and um, he sends the kids away. It's just like it's this, a really good st- story. And then what's awesome is is that it's a testament to this storyline is that the tie-ins are mm-hmm. all really awesome. They don't feel like just filler. Uh, Because I'm just looking at, like, you know, coming in June type of thing for Marvel. You know, you've got your regular Avengers title with uh, basically the Kree uh, revolution for the most part. Right. You know, with, like, Protector, which is Captain Marvel Jr., uh, Marvel Boy. Uh, You know, Ms. Marvel slowly becoming the new Captain Marvel. Right. Uh, Then you've got New Avengers, the story of, like, the Iron Fist training somebody to become Mm -hmm. a phoenix. Cohesive, cohesive universe. Avengers Academy, you have uh, the kids fighting with the X-Men kids. Secret right. Avengers is doing some great crazy shit with also the Kree invasion. <laughs> Wolverine X-Men is dealing with also a little bit more of the Shi'ar side of it. Right. Um, X-Men Legacy is a good book, but I can't really tell you about it. Um, yeah, same here. <laughs> but it's a really, really awesome stuff. And like with all Marvel titles, you get a free digital copy when you buy no. when you buy one, which is really cool, man. Like Marvel has built such a cohesive universe at this point that, like, you know, there, there's talks of kind of like a soft relaunch coming. I think it's it's taken them so long to get to this point where, like, you know, everybody knows everybody's business as far as the comics go. You know, even if it's like a little nod here and there in whatever book you're reading, like Defenders or Fantastic Four, they're acknowledging the fact that these other guys are going to other places and fighting other stuff. You know, yeah, they're doing stuff. And like lately, the the Marvel Universe has been nonstop action. You know, it's it's good. Like they, it's not like uh, the universe has been so good in the past few years that it's no, there's no twiddling thumbs. Uh, nobody's just sitting around doing nothing, which I, I wish I could say that about the DC universe at this point. But, yeah. you know, it's just, it, it's weird. Yeah. Um, but I do want to talk about a, um, a, nice, uh, a nice addition to the, uh, the comic stack this week, which was Action Comics number 10. And uh, this, is, this is, like, I think this is an excellent issue. Uh, Grant Morrison, Rags and Morales. Rags and Morales, I feel like, stepped up his, uh, his art right now. He definitely did. He definitely did something up on this issue. I really enjoyed this issue. Uh, I always like to see Rex Morales work on this. I mm-hmm. love his Batman. I love his Superman. Right. Um, he draws everyone so young. He does. And he also, uh, you know, because Superman rocks two, two, uh, two costumes in this, one being his armor and one being his red T-shirt. Uh-huh. And they both look great. Like, they I do. I honestly do think, like, I do not like the Mandarin collar on Superman, but uh, his cape looks great. Pretty awesome. Yeah, if you hang on, if you can, if you can bring him down now, that'd be perfect. That would be like an awesome segue. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, they're talking. All right. Uh, uh. The, yeah, the book, the book was ro- the book is rocking. Uh-huh. Uh, Action Comics is kind of all over the place. Like the last couple yeah. of issues has focused on like an Obama Superman, which has been really awesome. The Obama Superman was a fantastic storyline. You know, because it was really like super yeah. science mm. and like really, it's like the stuff that uh, Morris is really good at. Well, that was that was also the tongue tongue in cheek commentary and they kill, on. And they uh, Clark Kent in this. They do well. I mean, because I I think I think one of the things that they touched on on the relaunch was the fact that um, Clark is dead. That like like adult Clark doesn't exist in. The, he's just Superman full time. Yeah. Because he wants to be. And this is kind of like the first book that you get a hint that like you know what like he's not really a jerk after all he's just like kind of misunderstood. Yeah. Um. And and there's like there's a few panels in this where you know he's with the Justice League, 
And he's like, well, you know what? Like, why aren't we, you know, helping starving people or doing anything in any other country? And they're kind of just like, look, like, we should just conscience. Like, I have a family. Um, like, we're from here. We have to follow the laws of the land. We can't go somewhere else and just kind of start being gods. Like, plus we're not gods. Have, plus, they have, like, a lot, you know, just the international for that type of shit. Right. right. And, and uh, Stormwatch. Stormwatch, right. Um, but I, I really dug the issue, man. This is like the last couple of issues of action have been great. It kind of meandered for like a little bit, and it's only up to issue ten. I really dug the fact that, and there was also like that weird story about the guy who shows up who's trying you to hunt, that? trying to hunt down Superman. You notice that they just they just added that on Superman Action Comics. Yeah, they never had the Superman it's on true. there before. They, this is the first time I've ever seen Action Comics with Superman in the actual title. I feel like they're no, no, no. They used to have um, Superman in Action in Comics. Action. Yeah, but um, no, I mean like in the fifty two. I feel like this is uh, that might be more of a sales ploy because uh, from what I hear, the numbers on action weren't they suck that stellar. They suck. I mean, a lot of the numbers like Dave. I was reading something yesterday about how basically DC's the the sales mm-hmm. jump that they've had with the new number ones. Right. It's plateaued completely. Really, like, they've really reached their pinnacle. There's nothing really beyond that. They're uh, they're mm-hmm. not picking up any new readers. They're not producing any new books that are really going to draw people in. It, it, GI it, Combat is not going to draw people in. It seems like they're meandering so hard at this point with uh, with a lot of their stuff. Um, and I really you know like the like un- not I'm not going to say unfortunately, but what was never the case with DC is like two of the books I look forward to the most, which also came out this week, are Animal Man and Swamp Thing, which I didn't read. You know, which are just like I'm not going to talk about them, but they're awesome books. You know, yeah, they are. And if you you have a if you have a company, well, it's two of your best writers there. You yeah. have you have uh, Jeff Lemire and, and Scott, uh, Snyder. Scott Snyder. If you have a company that has such a cast of characters, such a wide net of these amazing characters, and the two books that people look forward to the most are Animal Man and Swamp Thing, hmm. and I'm not taking away from Animal Man and Swamp Thing, but I feel like you got to step up your well, your game a little bit. In 1985, you know? Swamp Thing was one of the, the the best books if you were an intelligent reader. You true, know, when true. Moore and Bissett were right. on the book. Right. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that is saying a lot when your marquee characters are being outshined by your they are. Uh, your secondary tier characters. You know, like, Green Lantern's an excellent, excellent book. Um, I really dig action. Batman's been, like, I feel like Batman is the best book that DC has going right now. Um, and the crossover is okay. You know, it's not that great. It's what you expect out of a crossover. Should we stop talking? What the fuck is that? I don't know. <laughs> I think there's an ad going on right now, and we're talking over the I'm ad. Muted. And Suncash just tripped over something. All right. Much Flown better. in from Detroit. Staying Flying at the. Flying back in Detroit. Staying <laughs> at the Ramada Inn Bayside. What's going on? I can't believe he's staying at the Ramada Inn. We're uh we're we're still at Blog World. Hey Suncast, question. Suncast, forget it. All right. <laughs> Nobody cares. They left us. They literally left us in a hole today. Okay, you know what? That's all right. I'm going to take out my penis. Uh, John's going to take out his penis, and I'm going to watch him. <laughs> it's healthy. It's, it's a very healthy thing, opposed to what uh, ex girlfriends have said about the UTS I gave them. You go, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, he went there. I went there. Uh, what's up, gentlemen? Hey, folks. How are you? Um, we uh, again. Yeah, we're, keep moving. We're we're coming to you live from uh, from Blog World in the basement of the Jacob Javis Center. Not the upper tier. Not the upper tier. The basement. In the basement, uh, we're in a corner. It's pretty cool. I think the show has been going well today. It's uh, um, it's cooler than our comic convention days. W- yeah, because we actually get to uh, to broadcast live to the to the internet to the masses at eleven o'clock in the morning. We're also gonna be, and this is not a joke. We're also gonna be back on the air at some point, interviewing a lady about sex. Yes, because she apparently writes a sex book. Yes, or sex books. And I think that probably me and this guy get the most tail out of everyone here. And that's also funny because I have been in a long-term relationship for about 13 years. And uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Um, you have, so you have the nice steady amount of sex. Yeah, well, I mean, like, you know. We are, well, we, I, mean, I mean, we do well for ourselves. I think I'm, I'm, a, I'm a charming guy. Yeah. We I, I, I'm good. I'm very good at looking but not touching. I don't have, yeah, <laughs> I don't have the, the looks. I have the, uh, the, the charm factor. Yeah. I think. If I, think. I can get the words out. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a stutterer. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very bad stutterer. Also, also not. I have a lot of like mucus in my mouth. We're, we're gonna have to edit this for later. Um, that was not comic book related talk. That's okay. 
at all. Well, they um, left. They left us. Whatever. They're they did leave us. We're still abandoned. we're waiting on people to. Uh, we want to do a trivia thing for. Yeah, we really want to do trivia because we don't want to. Uh, bring home the crap that we brought here. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much the long short of it is. It's also it's also going to be funny for you guys watching um, the rerun if you want to watch the rerun because we're it's like us like aimlessly looking into into space basically. No, I'm looking the, at the I'm looking at the thousand people that are staring back at us. That's true. We let's have about this for a, a lot of fans out. Yeah, let's talk about Iron Man. Uh, Iron Man number comic book um, came comic out this week. <laughs> comic book number five eighteen. <laughs> number five eighteen. Invincible Iron Continuing Man. Continuing the the mm. never ending run of Fraction and Laroca. Yeah, which is a fantastic one of the. I think it's one of the most underrated runs in uh, comic history. This does not get the attention that it should. Be. No. Um, a lot, you know what? A lot of Iron Man stuff gets post recognition. You, you know what? Iron Man has gone through what three to four different sets of armor mm. during this run. Um, this one being the craziest, if, if you can see here, yeah. uh, that is Rhodey in his brand new Iron Man outfit. He is Iron Man, not War Machine anymore, right. uh, because Iron Man uh, Tony can no longer, because he's next drunk and he was recently drinking, he can no longer pilot the Iron Man armor. So they got this crazy, like stealth, awesome mm. Tron-like suit. Plus, they've, I mean, they've did an awesome job of like revitalizing. Iron Man's uh, Rose Gallery. Yeah. Every single one from the Melter. They're all souped up. Yeah, the Melter, Firepower, Chemest- uh, Chemistro, um, the Mauler. And apparently they all have explosive gems inside them. Yes. There's <laughs> Mandarin has uh, implanted some type of bomb in, in each of them, mm. which is some type of weird gem. Because the thing about Mandarin is, uh, which many people don't know, aside from the fact that he's Chinese and he has rings, is... Uh, <laughs> He basically that's so, that's so racist. I know, uh, but that's it. I mean, and the guy's name is a Mandarin. Mm. Uh, he uh, is basically kind of like a Green Lantern, where he found a crashed uh, alien ship and he uncovered these ten rings of power. Right. Um, which at one point were implanted into his spine. Uh, I kind I really kind of like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think rings are there to be worn on your fingers. Yeah. Well, so. I, well, I also like the fact that at the end of the second Armor Wars, like he came out with it with no hands. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because hands off. Yeah. Um. You've also got so during this whole run, the, like this is one of my favorite plot points, mm. is the fact that uh, the government created well, Hammer Industries and the government created a group of armored dudes called Detroit Steel. Mm. It was originally one dude, and this dude went nuts and has been on the run and looks like super pro. He's wearing like a football helmet and has drugged and kidnapped um, Sasha Hammer. Yeah, and. Is just being a psychopath and just like <laughs> repeating his name over yeah. and over again. I'm Detroit Steel. Yeah, I'm Detroit Steel over and over again. It's just really creepy. Mm. There's a great Spy Master bit because Spy Master infiltrated Stark Resilient. Mm. Um, what else we got going on in here? We've got Rhodey having fun with his armor. We've got, yeah. oh, the, the big thing is that Obadiah Stane, who's been working for Mandarin. Zeke. Zeke. Yeah, oh yeah, Zeke, yeah, Zeke. <laughs> Zeke, Zeke Obadiah is the father. Zeke stayed. Uh, Zeke, uh, his the the son of Obadiah Stane, uh-huh. ex enemy, um, has taken this exploding gem and removed it from his chest and is about to face down with the Mandarin. Yeah, which uh, which should be pretty awesome. This book comes out like maybe every two weeks. It does. Um, it does. It's, it's solid. It's completely solid too, man. It's so, it's such a well written book. It's such a well done book, um, especially with, like you have the Laroca stuff and you have Fraction on the book. And Laroca, I always liked his art, and he went from being like one of those '90s guys to being just like a fantastic. He's amazing. Like, it's very. Uh, his art is more detailed, like um, the Luna Brothers. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's very like it's simplistic it is, it, it like is that. More you know? like Luna Brothers nowadays. Yeah. He still uses the photographic. Um, you know, thing for for characters, uh-huh. he uses like actors to like you know Sawyer from Lost basically plays Tony Stark in this. Right. Um, but he does a great job. It is very underrated. I I'm, mm. I know it sells decently enough because it's an Iron Man title, but uh, it's a book that really should be getting more attention. It is a very awesome book. It really makes its way to the top of the stack. Um, it's always within the first like three books I read every week. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's, I feel like it's it's not gonna get like when when Bob Layton did Iron Man and nobody talked about it. F- yeah. Like, d- until like years later, I think they're gonna talk about the Fraction Run if like depending on how it ends. Um, yeah. Which I hope it doesn't for a very long time. I don't want to uh, leave it. I feel like it's gone. It's coming to an end though. Uh, people are gonna be talking about it. It's just like it's really cool, like Iron Man stuff. It's a little bit, you know, it's 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 really interesting. Um, he did a lot of really cool extreme stuff. Uh, people are gonna remember the Ellis Run, big time. 
Um, and I think the Fraction run is up there. You know, I think, the, I think the Fraction run is the is the sol- most solid run I've ever read of Iron Man. In your adult life, I think so. Yeah, because even I'll, though, like, I'll agree I, with that. I mean, because I grew up on like Armor Wars with Leighton and stuff like that, right. and Michelin. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, this is just like adult mm-hmm. Iron Man. Very well done. Very smart. Super science. Mm. It took the ideas that Warren Ellis kind of put forward and yeah. expand on them. And in fact, like it all depends on your rogues gallery. Mm. And he has successfully really made an incredible rogues gallery mm. out of the existing members. He really did. Iron Man has one of those rogues galleries that's kind of like Titanium Man, yeah. the Dynamo. It, it's it's like it's 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 up there. Yeah, you know, like you have like great the great rogues galleries of all time: Batman, Flash, uh, Melter. <laughs> Melter, uh, Spider Man. You know, Iron Man has some interesting rogues. Um, Stingray. Stingray. Well, kind of. He's not really a villain anymore. Ghost. Having did great things with him. Yeah, they did amazing. Yeah. I. You know what it is? The thing about Ghost is I love his Thunderbolts costume, mm. but I'm such a sucker for that old school Bob Layton costume. Oh yeah. Because all of Bob Layton's yeah. designs were so mm-hmm. awesome. Every one that he designed, every one of Stark's armors yep. were incredible looking. Yeah. Um, very simplistic all, stuff. Very like very streamlined. Like mm-hmm. now we're going to more of like the busy design. And I'm cool with that. Yeah. I just want to see I we both want to see Iron Man twenty twenty. We want to see Arnold Stark. Every issue. Every we issue. We want to see I think it's coming. I really yeah. feel in my gut that we're we're gonna be coming. All right, it looks like we may not be doing trivia uh, today. Unless, right. we, unless these people here, we can just go, hey, trivia. I went upstairs to the book expo and I gave it out to the people in the comic Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Can you can you just see if like anybody here wants to do it? And anybody want to like, down some trivia, some contests, free stuff? Yeah, just like say like, hey, we're doing free trivia stuff. like right now. If you want to come and like stuff, like who wants free stuff? Yeah. Who wants free stuff? And you're gonna rent out the microphone. <laughs> No, like right here, yeah, just right like here. Just a like, bunch of people yeah. are just like walking around over Any here. Any type of if they're a living, breathing human being, they can they can participate. Say, hey, do you want to do comic book trivia? You get some free stuff, maybe for your wife or kid. As we get ready for that, maybe for your kid, or your mistress. Well, it's for your mistress. It's to, uh, you want a patch statue? Hey, buddy, you want to do some comic book trivia live on air? Nah, I don't think so. Do this? Um, yeah, let's talk about Dark Avengers. Dark Th- Avengers. Number Thunderbolts. One. Thunderbolts has uh, turned into Dark Avengers. Um, which is very interesting because it makes so much sense mm-hmm. about how they're kind of ending. They ended that storyline and then started this new one, you know, without even really uh, messing up the status quo. Uh, without really messing up the status quo of the book, you have that that other team of Avengers. Uh, I'm sorry, they have the other team of Thunderbolts still trapped in time. You have Luke Cage, who is the uh, not de facto leader of whatever Thunderbolt is, you know, on the on the prison, and the Dark Avengers pretty much become the new Thunderbolt, but they're going to be um, this new team that Luke Cage is in charge of. And they also have Nanites in them. So it's like a really cool thing where they like they show up, um, they think they're going to win the battle, there are a bunch of these bad guys who know all the heroes' weaknesses, and then the government shows up and, and like pretty much zaps them into submission. What happened? We need, what? We need you to, uh, to wrangle up some trivia people. That mic is not on, by the way. Yeah. Is it working? Now, now it is, yeah. Now it is. Now it is. What uh, do you want me to do? Just get human bodies to just stand here and just answer some questions, and we'll win some prizes. Just okay. announce free I'll stuff. I'll find someone. And if we and, and honestly, if we don't, I'll if, find someone. If we don't, um, we're gonna burn this table on fire. If, if we don't, don't, we might as well just start interviewing her. How about him? He wants free stuff. You can't have free stuff. No free stuff. Yeah, yeah. there'll be a ringer. No, but if, if if we uh, just if, free stuff. Okay, I I I I'll, I'm gonna try. Yeah, no promises. That's fine. I'll try. Anybody. Just grab nobody's, the, nobody's grab that guy with a beard. I nobody's holding a gun to your head. <laughs> look for guys who look like they want to read comic books. Who wants free stuff? Who wants free stuff? Anyway, nobody wants free stuff. I guess not. When you yeah. Come, when you come to these events, you want free stuff. You want free stuff. Like I said, uh, Jonathan and I will also be interviewing a lady about sex, some kind of sex lady. Um, she's standing right in front of us right now and just kind of like she's waiting to be interviewed. And you can say that in a different way too. Hey, she's waiting to be interviewed. She's waiting to be interviewed. <laughs> so, uh, uh, again, uh, we are Blog World today. Blog World, we're, Blog World. We're Blog, blog World. world. We're going to be on air all not, day. Not blogging though. Nine hours a day blogging about the earth. That's what Blog World is. Um, looking at dudes with beards. Looking at chicks with beards. A lot of weird people. Looking at Kunal Roar, the comedian. 
It's uh, funny how many people are out outside of the Blog World area who are just like sitting around on laptops and they're yeah. all asking each other, so are you here for Blog World? I'm like, oh no, there's free Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> I've, I've really, like, this is probably like the easiest event to just kind of like slide your way into. Like if you had... I feel like we start going like, hey nerd, come here. If, <laughs> if you had like a lanyard at home and just like stuck some stuff in it, you could have probably gotten into Blog World. Yes. 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 Uh, I wish we could have done like an Evil Stan Lee thing today. No, I wish I, I'm glad we can't. That would have been great. Do Evil Stan Lee. Um, you want to talk about uh, Game of Thrones? <laughs> I love talking about Game of Thrones. <laughs> All right. Hey, we got. Hey. We, Pick up the microphone. Yeah, please. Pick up the microphone. We have a. Pick yeah, up the microphone, please. Free stuff. Mm. All right. Hi. You're gonna have to back up. Back like, up. Stand, stand on that yeah. X if you could. Thank you. All right. How are you? What's your name? My name is Molly, and I'm from InsertGeekHere.com. Oh, wonderful. Is that based on Earth? Sorry? Is that based on Earth? It's geek culture. Uh Uh-huh. How good are you with comics? I'm better at indie comics than... Oh, okay. All right. Major... What type of indie comics do you you, you enjoy? Um, I've been really loving Jennifer's Blood. Okay. I've been really loving... You mean Jennifer Blood? Jennifer, Jennifer Blood. Blood. The Garth Ennis book, right? I don't know why. Okay. So it's like a hospital. Wasn't that a movie with uh, with Megan Fox? Jennifer's Body. Ah, okay. There you go. I that, that's I, probably why. I don't know why I know I'm that. I'm sorry. What, what was your name again? My name is Molly. Molly, okay. I'm John. Yeah. This Rich. is Rich. We both roast a, uh, a comic book show. So what we're doing is we're doing a few comic book trivia questions, and you get to win prizes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Which my friend Andrea was here too because she's better at the major stuff than I am. Can you well, can you like signal her to come? We have a lot of prizes. Yeah, we have we have yeah. a ton of prizes. You can here. win stuff right now. All right, yeah. hit me with an easy one. An easy one? Um, you said indie comics, right? Indie comics. Yeah. Indie comics. All right. Um, who is the creator and artist of Poison Elves? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Who is the creator and artist of Poison Elves? Of what? Poison Elves. Poison, uh, a creator of Poison Ivy. Poison Elves. Elves. I wouldn't even know this. Oh, help me out. That's indie. Help me out. Creator of Poison Ivy. Poison, Poison Elves. Elves. Poison Elves. Yeah. Old school black and white. I'm, I'm totally lost here. That's a hard question. Poison Elves? That's an easy question. Yeah, that's a hard question. That's an easy question. That's not an easy question. All right, are you giving up? Is this, your, fr- is this your friend? Yeah, she is also insert geek here. So we have two okay. people. We have two. So we have two people who enjoy comic. Books. All right. So all right. Let's, let's, let's scratch that one. We'll give you more of like a team question, so you can win some stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. What What do you like? Like, what is your comic book deal? Uh, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna be good. You're gonna. We're you might you vote because um, I'm also poor, so I don't get to keep eating as current as I'd like. Okay. 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 But you but you have a good smattering of Marvel I, and DC. I have random stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So staying with the staying with the indie for for what you're doing. You ever hear of a comic called Mad Men? Not the, not the TV show. Mad Men. No. How about Max? No. And Max. How about what do you read? Tell me. I because I read a lot of graphic novels. Like uh-huh. I like the I like the succinct story. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Scott Pilgrim. I haven't read Scott Pilgrim. It's on my Have wish list, though. I am also poor. Uh, so we're all poor. We're, we're all poor. poor. Uh, we here. wouldn't be doing this if we weren't. Exactly. Um, give me a favorite. Give me. Give me a comic that you enjoyed. Comic that I like. Uh, Last one you read. Buffy. 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 To be honest, Buffy's what got me into comics. Okay. I only started reading comics because of season eight. Okay. So okay. I got a question for you. So what is the most major comic that Josh Whedon has put his pen to? That's Astonishing X-Men. Correct. You right. win yourself a prize. That I knew. Enjoy this Leonidas figure. <laughs> yeah, who, that's give an her, easy Give her both. Give you, her want, both. you want two of them? Yeah, you, you have got, two of them. That's a set. You that's can that's put them on eBay. Okay. There you go. Now, uh, we're going uh, to make it hard on you because you got Marvel DC stuff. All right. Oh, God. Okay. What was, my, uh, what was my big DC my big DC question yesterday? I don't know. Uh, I'm more Marvel than DC. You're more You're Marvel, Marvel than DC. Can, okay. can you name three characters who have played Venom? Can you name three characters who've played Venom? Oh, you can do that. No, I can't. Please don't curse. <laughs> it's blog world, lady. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Um, because, uh, Frack. Flash Thompson. Uh, Brock. Flash Thompson. Uh, Brock. Right. Yeah, okay. One of us. There's one more. One of us. One more and you win a t-shirt. And then Peter Parker. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> he did. Wasn't, wasn't called official. Venom. It was wasn't one. Was one guy. We'll give you a hint. He was a villain. He was a villain. He was a nut. He was a, a Spider-Man villain before he was Venom. 
and it was fairly recent, and it's before Flash Thompson. It's the in between. Meanwhile, I did like the um, the Venom. The be- I read did read the beginning of the new Venom line. Flash Thompson stuff. It's yeah. great. And it was it's really good. good. But my issue with the um, can you talk Spider-Man, into the microphone? The, my issue with the Amazing Spider-Man um, uh. p- point one was that it was all about Venom. It had nothing to do yeah, with Spider-Man. Yeah. Yes. But their free comic book day book that year about Spider-Man was awesome. Yeah. It would have been a great point one. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah. Are See, you trying to stall so you can figure out the answer? Yeah. Well, no, I actually have a lot of issues with Point One Comics, and if anyone wants to talk uh-huh. about the more Marvel Point One program, I'm well, I there. think they're ending it. I think they're coming yeah. to an end. No, for the most part, they're great, but a lot of them were kind of like I, uh, kind of like a bait and switch. Mm, yeah, right. like that Spider-Man book. That was a bait and switch. It wasn't about well, Spider-Man. It had nothing to do. Well, they, Peter I mean, was in like two frames. Well, uh-huh. I think they, I think they just want to want to introduce the, the characters to the world. But yeah. I think that they're kind of moving away from that program altogether. I think they're dropping the the point one thing. But to be honest, it was a great program, and they did say that it did help sales a yeah, lot. Yeah, sure it did. Like I, I made a point of, of kind of cornering Tom Brevard about it mm-hmm. multiple times because I he's like a fox that guy. You don't want to corner him. Yeah, he loves that program. <laughs> uh-huh. He does. Of course he does. He spearheaded it. But uh, as someone who wanted to get into Marvel, I thought it was a great way to get into Marvel. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you not know, a great way. Not a great way. I, DC's done way. more to keep me than Marvel has. Why is that? Okay. Well, a lot of the point one books were, you know, they had that one story that kind of got you going, but it didn't keep you going in, you know, like the Deadpool one. Yes, 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 yes. The Deadpool one, you, st- you, you got that one separate right. story, and then you jump back to it. You're all of a sudden, the next book, you're on another world. You have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Like, that's not going to keep yeah, a new reader. It, yeah, it, it is tough. All it right. is tough. We're, we're going to end the show, so could you put the, the microphone down? Thank you very yeah. much. You, you are awesome. There, Thank yeah. you so much for helping out with our, our, our show. Thank you. Enjoy we hope you t-shirt. like your prizes. Yes. Yeah. Enjoy it. Toys and T-shirts and such. All right. So uh, that, that that was trivia at Blog World. <laughs> <laughs> it was Matt Gargan, by the way, Scorpion. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You got you want. Yeah. Do you, you want, want the microphone? Do you want one more? You want an extra <laughs> question? You have a chance right, for another prize. We got we got one minute. We left. got one minute left for it. I just gave her a T-shirt, man. I got. Well, I want to get rid of the big thing. All right, all right. Let's get rid of the big thing. X-Men question. Okay, let's see. X-Men, you want to do a hard X-Men? Go, give her next. Yeah, give her a hard X-Men question. What? You got a hard question? Uh, what is Professor X's son's name? Who's Professor X's son? Oh, Legion. Perfect. You win. You win. Give her the big guy. You get it. You get a pretty good thing. There you go. Enjoy yourself. And it's sealed too. Sealed All right. exclusive. <laughs> it no looks problem. like we're gonna have to there. wrap it up here on hey, ladies, uh, behind ladies. the counter. John is kicking it to some women right now. We have been uh, broadcasting from Block World. You'll probably see us during the day. Thank you very oh, much so for much. tuning in thank to you. another you, episode you. of Behind the Counter. Uh, I am your host, Rich Stambolian, and with me, as always, is I don't even know anymore, man. I'm Jonathan Adler. He don't know. We're gonna interview a lady about sex. See you guys later.